In this video, I'm going to help you get into the hobby, but make sure you're not going too fast. So you've finally decided that you want to get into the hobby, or you've made some running starts and, uh, and you've been unsuccessful, um, and you're kind of figuring, well, there's something I'm either doing wrong if you've been un unsuccessful, or you know, you're, you're wanting to make sure you don't do something wrong if you're just getting into it. And there's a ton of information. Obviously, with the YouTubes and, and everything else out on the internet, there's, there's so much information. So you can go down a really deep hole and really pull in a ton of data before you even pick up your first paintbrush or whatever. But the thing is, is that all that information that you can pull in from all the different sources on this amazing crazy internet that we use, um, what it can do is it's, it's, it's a fire hose. You're basically drinking from a fire hose. And what you don't want to happen is to have that same attitude come through as you get started. So what do I mean by this? Well, basically, um, don't do what I did. I'm going to do a whole bunch of that don't do what I did thing in this video. But don't do what I did and decide once you've decided, okay, this is the game. With me, I decided I'm going to finally get into 40K. I had been doing other little things here and there, but when I decided I wanted to get into 40K, I went all out to some degree. And I'm going to tell you, you shouldn't do that. What I did is I went to my local store and I ordered an entire Tau army that was about 1500, maybe 1750. Like I had sat down with some friends and wrote up a list and did all this stuff. This is the first 40K that I've ever done, okay? And, and I decided to drop the hammer and pre-order through my local shop, which if you pre-ordered a whole bunch of stuff or you know, ordered stuff, they gave you a discount. And so I did all that. But still, I dropped a huge chunk of change. And then the day came when all the stuff showed up and it was very exciting to go and pick it all up and take it home. And then now I have a giant, giant pile of plastic. And that's where a lot of people can get in trouble. So tip number one, if you're interested in getting into wargaming, don't go out and buy a huge amount of models right off the bat. Now, if you're getting into a skirmish game, let's say you're getting into something like, I don't know, Malifaux. Malifaux, you can buy a single box of guys, and then once you're done with them, and, you know, ladies and crazy weird critters and all kinds of, when I say guys, I mean, you know, models. Um, but you're going to find that once you get that one box done, you're not ready to play. And that's one of the great things about skirmish games. I've talked about it, I don't know how many different times. But the fact of the matter is, is that if you go out and buy 2,000 points worth of Space Marines uh, or, you know, Skaven for your uh, Age of Sigmar, or you buy a humongous bolt action army completely from the get-go, and this is your first rodeo, you're going to have a bad time. Instead, one unit get one unit. I wouldn't buy just one model because if you buy one model, it's probably an HQ type unit, some sort of elite or leader or whatever. And you shouldn't generally try to have your first model be a leader or an elite or a, an HQ unit because you generally want to do a better job with those and you should get some of this other stuff out of the way first. Now, there's another option here. Let's say instead of going out and buying any models for your you know army that you're moving into, you can go a different direction. And instead, you can buy some models that you're maybe going to give away to friends. Most people who are really into Dungeons and Dragons or, um, you know, Pathfinder or any of the other zillions of different um, role-playing games out there, they're not necessarily into building and painting and that portion of the hobby. They like to play the role-playing games. But they would like to have a character, a painted character that they can use, you know, in, 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 in the game and that kind of stuff. And so that for you, as a beginner, if you've got friends who are into role-playing games, you can start practicing by buying just one model. In a lot of situations, it's actually two. Um, if you go to your local shop, they probably carry a line of models from WizKids. And they are unpainted, but they're already primed, kind of a light gray color. And they make a lot of fantasy figures. They make a lot of um, uh, D&D stuff and Pathfinder stuff. Or you may have bones at your local store, which is made by a company called Reaper. Now, those are not primed, so you kind of have to prime them and all that kind of stuff. But either way, you can find some of those models. And if you've got a good friend and you want to 
kind of use them as your guinea pig, then you can bring them along and say, who's the one that you want? And then you can take that and then start practicing on that. And then when you're done, you give it to them and now they're happy and then you've got a reason to bother to do that. And it gives you some practice. Those models are inexpensive and it's a good way to kind of get started before you start actually buying units that you want to do a little bit better with. I would tell you to practice on a lot of those types of models. If you've got a friend who's playing Dungeons and Dragons, they're probably playing with a bunch of people. And I bet you some of those people also might like to have some stuff painted. It gives you a goal and some practice, makes them happy. Everybody kind of wins. So something about like that, take a look at that when you want to get started before you start actually buying the stuff that you're going to paint because you don't, you're, you, you'll be generally unhappy if the very first things that you paint are the things that you want to put into your army or your crew or your squad or whatever, depending on the game. Now, here's the issue. You're saying to me, hey, that's really cool. I went and bought a model. That's great, but I need to paint it. I need, uh, in some situations, to build it and glue it. I need to do a lot of that kind of stuff. And here's another area where you can go a little crazy and a little overboard when you're first starting out with this hobby, and that is the supplies. You need some supplies, absolutely, but you don't need necessarily as many as, let's say, I bought when I first started. When you decide that it's going to be time for you to start building actual models, and these are not the pre-built ones from the store from WizKids or Bones, I'm talking about whatever they're on a sprue and you got to put them together or maybe they're even metal or resin and you got to at least kind of glue them together a little bit put them on a base that kind of stuff there are things that you need and you can get them inexpensively without going overboard you need a hobby knife um, a lot of people refer to it as an exacto knife that is a brand name kind of like people refer to um, photocopies as xeroxes that kind of stuff but any kind of hobby knife you can get you can generally get from either a hardware store or um, maybe like an art store, maybe, maybe not an art store, like a hobby store. When I say hobby, I mean like a, like a hobby lobby, a craft store. Whereas if you go to, in the many situations, your hobby store where they sell the models, they'll sell those knives, but they will be expensive. They are cheap. If you can't find them locally around you, you can go online and you can get them for very inexpensive. But you need them not only for trying to shave flash and mold lines and things like that off of your models, but it also just helps to have them sometimes when you need to cut things and all kinds of stuff. Those types of things, those types of hobby knives, super important. Another thing you need is a decent clippers. It doesn't have to be that decent. It doesn't have to be a $30 pair of clippers. I bought an expensive pair of clippers as my first clippers. It wasn't necessary. There's plenty of places where you can buy them. If you've even just got a wire cutters at home, you can use it. Um, the curved kind of wire cutters don't work great with these sprues. We always want the kind generally that are straight. And, um, you know, but in a pinch, a wire cutters will certainly do the job. But again, even a straight cutter like that doesn't have to be $30. You can get away with some pretty inexpensive ones, but it's kind of a necessity. You do not want to take the sprue and just twist to get the until the model breaks free like I did when I first started. And then you need something generally to kind of smooth out any extra little bits and pieces and things like that. Emery boards, um, which nowadays, like when I was a kid, emery boards were just hard things just used on your, your nails. And now they make, they're squishy kind of. They have like a layer of foam in between both sides. And that kind of helps so you don't push too hard and flatten areas out. They can be, you know, expensive at the hobby store, but again, cheap at the craft store, um, cheap at the, sometimes even at the, um, the beauty place, depending, you know, if it's like more of a bulk beauty place, uh, you know, you can get them and it works out pretty well for that too. But those three pieces, the hobby knife and the clippers and the sandy thing, the little emery board, those are really, for the most part, the main three things you need to start. All right. So you need glue as well, but cyanoacrylate glue, super glue, CA glue, whatever you want to call it, you can get that a lot of places cheap. I go to the hobby store and buy fancy stuff that comes in either very thin or very thick or gel or whatever, but I've been doing it for a while. When you first want to start, you can go to the dollar store and you can get uh, tubes of super glue and they will work very well on plastics, metals, or pretty much anything else, even resin. Um, 
don't go and buy a huge bottle either when you first start because if you don't do a lot of building, you will eventually find that it will go bad. It will still be fluid. It won't get hard. It just won't stick as well as it when it first did. And I don't know if it has something to do with oxidization or whatever, but I even now today when I'm building a lot of stuff, I still buy the smaller bottles. They have three sizes at the hobby shop and I always buy the smaller one or maybe the medium one. I've never bought the big one other than that one first time. I'm trying to help you out with my experience. So don't buy the big bottle unless you have a humongous bunch of terrain or something to build. Generally don't do it. People ask me all the time about brushes. People ask Sam all the time about brushes. The last video of last week where Sam was showing you how to do layering and, and blending, there were a lot of questions in the comments about, hey, what brushes is he using there? As it turns out, Sam and myself as well generally use really inexpensive brushes. And when you first start, you can do that same thing. Here's an image of the brushes that Sam uses. And you'll notice that there's five brushes in there and it is marked $6. So inexpensive brushes are just fine when you are first getting started. When you try to get to the next level and you hit that plateau or all that kind of stuff far down the road, then if you wanna spend some money on good brushes, knock yourself out. But when you're starting, you're gonna treat them poorly anyway, and you're gonna do some of the wrong stuff with them. So don't waste a bunch of money. Get some inexpensive brushes that will keep a decent enough point and usually also have enough uh, bristle. If they're super short bristles, they will dry out quicker. And so you don't wanna do that. And lastly, I'm gonna talk about paint. When you get into paint, I would not, as a starter, unless you can get an amazing deal on it, I would not go buy like a big starter kit with 30 or 50 or 100, you know, uh, pots of paint in it that you spend a bunch of money on because frankly it may turn out to be a brand that you don't like down the road and now you've got a whole bunch left over definitely start by getting white and getting black um, you can get Vallejo you can get Citadel you can get Reaper if you can find it in your local area um, look for actual paints designed for miniatures even if you're just starting out I would tell you not to use the craft paints that you get in the big jug, or well, it's not a jug, but you know what I mean, in the big thing at like say Walmart or Hobby Lobby. Don't buy that stuff because the pigment is amazingly thick in comparison to the pigment in paints that are actually designed for miniature painting. So don't skimp on the paint when you start because you'll just be a lot happier with the results, but also don't go crazy with the colors. Like I said, black, white, um, I would tell you to get maybe a couple of browns, like a darker brown. I usually like to go with a chocolate brown. I use that as a base for a lot of things like gold, um, for leather, for any kind of things that you're painting like that. And then I like to find like a lighter brown as well. Um, if you're starting out and you're painting, let's say, I don't know, let's say some um, blood angels. Obviously you wanna get a couple of reds. Generally get like two reds, get a lighter red and a darker red. They will tell you sometimes that you should get three. You should get what they call the triad, which is the base, the shade, or the darker color, the shadow color, and the highlight color. I generally like to use washes, especially as a new painter. I think it's a good idea to use washes as your shade. The three triad washes that I think are the most important and are basically liquid talent, I'm still a huge fan of the Games Workshop, Nuln Oil, Agrax Earthshade, and Seraphim Sepia. Those three, mixed with all the different colors that you may have down the road, are astounding. They will do so much good work for you and make you really happy with the results very quickly. Get, buy those three, buy some black and white, and then pick out a couple more colors and buy, if you wanna get really buy cheaply, Buy a green, and then if you need a lighter green for some reason, add white to it on your palette. Build yourself a wet palette too. That'll also save you a lot of paint and just make your overall stuff real happy. And wet palettes are very cheap. I've made a video a very long time ago, Pachow, about how to build one. It's one of my more popular ones. But in this day and age, it's the sound is kind of lousy and the lighting's not good. But watch it if you haven't already. Get yourself a wet palette. You will be happy from the get-go. Um, people in the comments who started without a wet palette and then have moved to it, l let the people know that, yeah, it, it's a wet palette is really the way to go. So that's pretty much about it. You really need, for the most part, for building three tools. You need glue, but not too much. You need um, some paint brushes. And then you need some paints. And again, don't go crazy with the paints. Definitely buy some washes. And like I said, I'll tell anybody at any time to buy those three washes I mentioned, and then buy some black and white, and maybe some browns, and maybe a skin tone. And then after that, 
don't go crazy. Buy a little bit of this and a little bit of that and get going with it. If you can get away with painting single figures, um, role-playing figures for your friends using those inexpensive uh, bones or WizKids models, that's a great way to get started and to practice and get yourself into the situation where you now feel glad to sit down and paint the one box that you bought, not the entire army that you bought. Start with one box once you've gone through all that preliminary stuff and work on it and get it done and then go to the next box. Don't start uh, a pile of shame, again, like this guy. And, and you will be a lot happier with the hobby because you will look forward more to getting to the next set and the next set and you won't be looking at this giant pile and all these tools and this huge tub of paint and, and, and just wonder where you went wrong with your life. 